Velkommen til Formula TV, hvor vi i dag som de første danskere nogensinde har fået lov til at komme helt indenfor på Pagani-fabrikken i Italien. Her kommer du til at opleve, hvordan produktionen af en af verdens dyreste hyperbiler foregår helt ned i detaljen. Det bliver nørdet. Det bliver fedt. God fornøjelse. Jeg har lige fået den mest sindssyge rundtur herinde på Pagani-fabrikken. Øh, Pagani-fabrikken det er jo rimelig lukket land, i hvert fald herinde i produktionshallen. Det her det er museet, vi står i. Men inde i produktionshallen, der må du ikke tage billeder, du må ikke lave video, du må ikke noget som helst. Men øh, fordi formler jo også af Pagani-forhandlere, så fik vi altså lov til at filme lidt derinde. Og jeg havde fået en interviewaftale med Francesco Perini, som er head of ja, stort set alt hos Pagani. Det er ham, der har hænderne nede i produktionen, det er ham, der har hænderne nede i kulfiberarbejdet, og det er også ham, der har hænderne nede i designet. Så han er sådan set den perfekte mand til at fortælle om det her mærke. Men Horacio Pagani var her ikke selv i dag, så ham kunne vi ikke få fat i. Francesco Perini han kommer til at vise os rundt på den her fabrik, og jeg kan godt love jer allerede nu, det bliver ultra nørdet det her. Men jeg ved, at der er flere af jer, der har efterspurgt, at vi lavede noget mere materiale på Pagani, og jeg har efterspurgt, at det også godt må blive endnu mere nørdet, end det plejer. Blive, og det, jeg synes jo ellers, at ligestallet er relativt højt. Det kan også blive meget vildere. Øhm, vi kommer til at gennemgå fabrikken. Vi kommer til at gennemgå nogle øh, sådan produktionsmetoderne her på Pagani-fabrikken. Vi kommer til at komme helt ned i, hvordan det her kulfiber bliver lavet. Hvorfor det er så vigtigt. Hvorfor man ikke bare brugt aluminium. Vi kommer også til at kigge på nogle biler, øh, som står her. Men husk lige på, at alle de her biler er kundebiler. Og nogle af kunderne er sådan lidt sky. De har ikke så meget lyst til, at vi står og filmer deres biler, inden de bliver leveret. Så vi har prøvet at lave nogle close up billeder og har prøvet Ligesom at få det til at lykkes inden for de rammer, der nu var. Alternativet var jo slet ikke at, at filme noget, kan man sige, så det er, jo, det er jo endnu værre. Jeg synes, at der stadigvæk er kommet en mega fed video ud af det Der er i hvert fald kommet et fedt interview, som er mega langt, og som jeg nu prøver at klippe ned til jer. Og det er det, du kommer til at se i dag. Francesco Perini, han er ikke overraskende jo italiener, så øh, han kommer til at tale italiensk. Nej, det er løgn. Han kommer til at tale engelsk. Øh, og hvis øh, ikke du lige er så stærk i engelsk, så vil jeg også prøve at lave undertekster til den her video, som du kan klikke til ved at klikke her på YouTube. Jeg vil også prøve at inddele videoen i nogle kapitler, øh, så det bliver delt lidt mere op. Hvis nu du ikke er så interesseret i motoren og heller vil høre noget om kulfiber, så kan du bare klikke over til det kapitel. Øh, og det kan du gøre her på YouTube ved bare at klikke der lidt rundt. Ved I hvad? Jeg håber bare, I har lyst til at nørde sammen med mig og nørde helt igennem på Pagani. Jeg har brugt en hel dag herude øh, på både at se museet og se hele produktionsfaciliteterne. Jeg er, lige nu er jeg faktisk rimelig træt op i hovedet, fordi jeg har fået så mange informationer. Men jeg håber, I vil se med. Det er tiden værd, I bruger på det. Tak. Husk at subscribe. Det skal I altid huske. Please. So could you walk us through the steps here? That, yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. that's not exactly the very first step. But uh, I want to show you how the carbon fiber looks like yeah. uh, in the very early stage, which is uh, effectively a pre-preg. Yeah. So uh, a combination of fabric and a specific resin, yeah. uh, providing the right properties that we are expecting as a maximum uh, performance in terms okay. of mechanical, and thermal properties and uh, sometimes also sound absorbing properties. So you have different kinds of carbon fiber for different parts of the car? Exactly. Or different, yeah, okay. I'll show you here. Yeah. You see carbon fiber looks like a roll. So it's uh, rolled up before yeah. the cutting process here yeah. on the table where all the shapes has been digitalized and tested before using into the production. Yeah. So, so she is not cutting by hand. It's, no. it's the machine that is cutting all the parts. Yeah. Okay. To, to have to have a hundred percent uh, uh, quality yeah. and uh, uh, traceability of okay. each each single part. Okay. So the carbon fiber comes in these rolls. Yes. Okay. Very nice. And uh, each material is uh, fully traceable. Yeah. We have all the information about each roll and yeah. each single piece cut out of the of the roll. Yeah. So th it's important to keep it as a history book of the car. Okay. Be because the 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 fact that we can preserve the historic part of the car, the the, the you know the meaning of each material building up the car. Uh, initially in the Zonda, we have one book. Yeah with all the information about the car. So it's like a, a build sheet for the whole exactly. of the car. Yeah, exactly. In, gathered in one book. In yeah. one book. Yeah. Uh, but for the Waira, we have three books for each car. For each car. Yes. And you are saving these books. So yes. if I come back with a car uh, 20 years from now, 
Everything you have all is the written there. Yes, exactly. Okay. So <coughs> you can uh, trace back uh, exactly which part number, which material. So also helps on a customer point of view to yeah. have uh, the maximum value of the car mm -hmm. and it can be rebuilt every time exactly in the same way. Yeah. So these uh, carbon fiber rolls, uh, Francesco, how are you storing them? They are effectively stored in a freezer. Okay. So the freezer, which is on this side. So why, why do they need to be stored in a freezer? The reason is due to the resin. Yeah. Because the complexity of the resin and the combination of the materials yeah. requires certain temperatures yeah. to preserve the properties yeah. before the real usage yeah. in the car. So the freezer keeps the properties stable yeah. for a longer time. Yeah. So we are sure that the quality of the roll is still maintained. And the resin is the thing that hardens when it gets uh, yes. heat. Yeah. Okay. This is how the freezer looks like. Okay. So this is different carbon fiber. Yes. For different parts of the car. There are approximately 40 different kind of rolls that we for, use. For one car? For one car that okay. combined together makes the all the parts of the car. And what about the differences between a Sonda and a Huayra? How many different types of carbon fiber is there in a Sonda compared oh, to a Huayra? Well, there are much less on the Sonda. Okay. We yeah. used to optimize the use and the technology yeah. 20 years ago, obviously, was uh, another time. Okay, yeah. So yeah. there were before your time. Yeah, yeah le less possibilities. <laughs> I, I yeah. would say from a <coughs> worldwide point of view. I yeah. mean, but the more the uh, composite technology expanded, yeah. and the more we could explore yeah. new possibilities. So, okay. so the thing is that we can actually create our own material. That's nice. the beauty of composites. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you some pieces yeah. just to make yeah. you understand exactly what we're talking about. Ah. So, so, this so is that is the visible part of the carbon fiber when yes, the car is done? Yes, the yeah. visible part, the aesthetic layer. Okay. You see it's a fabric, uh, yeah. but it's still soft yeah. before the curing process. Yeah. And uh, it's slightly sticky because mm -hmm. of the resin. So okay, so the resin is the sticky part. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the reason for which we need to preserve it in the freezer. Yeah. Because with uh, heat and humidity, yeah. the resin starts to dry out. To dry and uh, cure. Actually, it's okay. a polymeric process of curing. Yeah. So we want it to happen just when it's in the autoclave for yeah. the curing process, which is a control process. Yeah. That's why we're talking about traceability of yeah. the entire process. Okay, very nice. And this one, on the other hand, yeah. It's another kind of pre-prick. Yeah. As you can see... I can see the structure is a bit different, yeah. It's a different weave, but it's also completely different materials. You yeah. see there are titanium wires in, in it. Okay. So this is called carbotitanium. Yeah. And this is the HP 62G2, yeah. which is the latest pack. So yeah. the latest generation of carbotitanium we are using, which is uh, uh, effectively a structural <coughs> member of the chassis. So yeah. it becomes a uh, unique piece with the chassis itself. Yeah. So it's uh, an important part uh, of our studies because it helps to improve the mechanical performance, mm -hmm. but also the safety of the car. Okay. So it's actually a mixture of titanium and the, the carbon classic fiber. Uh, carbon fiber. Yes. Okay. Not and how strong is this compared to, let's say, an aluminum chassis when you make that? How, how strong is the <laughs> compared to each other? Well, we are talking about uh, different uh, levels. Yeah. But uh, if you consider that a car normally has a rigidity of, uh, let's say, 10, yeah. when you apply these kind of materials and you're using this technique and you engineer the chassis in a, in a proper way, yeah. you can reach a level up to uh, 80 or 90. Okay. So that's the scale level yeah. of yeah. difference. So it's a lot more, a lot more. The strength than eight, aluminum. Eight to nine times yeah. when you put the things on together. Yeah. But if you look at the single material itself, it's a different percentage. So okay. that's why I'm, I was talking yeah. about the engineering of the chassis, yeah. the way you build it and the process. It's yeah. the old thing which makes the material effective. Yeah. Why carbon fiber uh, instead of uh, a lot of other materials? <coughs> well, carbon fiber is a, it, it's a difficult material. Yeah. It requires a lot of attention, mm -hmm. but it also requires a lot of uh, you know, skills. Everyone working here has a specific uh, skill set 
uh, we're talking about artisan level so they are really working with their hands in a magnificent way to make mm -hmm. this happen so aluminum can be you know used and pressed and bent uh, and it can be um, automatic mm -hmm. somehow uh, you cannot do that no. for uh, this kind of material in the composite no. world so, so you have no robots here at the Pagani factory no, no I'll show you just now how yeah. it's actually yeah. used already cut in pieces yeah uh, but also we have the molds yeah. coming on the other side of the building uh, which combined together let make this uh, process happen okay so uh, the, the fact is uh, as I said there are no robots it's a pure it's a pure artisan war mm -hmm. uh, and it requires a very specific techniques to use this material and to make them effective because mm -hmm. if you have I would say still a good material, but mm. you don't have the process and the right skill set to work it, you will not have the right properties on the final product. No, no, no. no. How do you become a Pagani carbon fiber worker? <laughs> How long does it take? Well, it takes a few years yeah. to, you know, s s define this proper skill set. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, quality standards that we need. We have the traceability. We have the structural requirements on each part. So. Yes. The fact that uh, you are putting together each single layer, yeah. it means that you are actually creating the own property of the material. So you are creating the properties of the material. If you take an aluminum block, yeah. it doesn't matter who work it. Uh, I mean, that's a block and yeah. the material is already there yeah. and the properties are going to be the same apart from the heat treatment or something else. Yeah. For the composite, you are actually building the material. Mm -hmm. You are creating the structure of the material with your hands. Yeah. And uh, I'll show you yeah, how please. this happens. So this is a small part of the car? Yes, this is one of the smaller parts, obviously. Yeah. And uh, that's the part that uh, goes uh, on the top of the engine as yeah. an engine cover. Yeah. Uh, you can see effectively here all the individual pieces. So these are uh, the parts that were cut in the, in the uh, former room that yes, we were in. in the yeah. room before. Yeah. <coughs> so they have been uh, prepared in the package and mm -hmm. let with the mold here so uh, you can see how difficult it is to follow exactly each shape and yeah. make sure that all the alignment uh, of the fibers is 100% uh, yeah because that is like a Pagani trademark the the weave the yes, weave of the, the weave. thing yeah yes. yeah but what if you make a mistake here Francesco well the quality process is quite strict yeah so we have a control and a check of the raw material yeah. at the in entry we mm -hmm. have a check of the each single part okay uh, uh, just cut yeah. and then we have the quality check when we use it yeah. and once the car, the part is uh, cured yeah. in the extraction yeah. before using it in the car we check it again okay so, so you have like quality checks yes, all steps of the way step. okay what is the biggest challenge with doing this? Is, is that the... To avoid uh, aesthetic defects? Yeah. That's the, one of the biggest challenges yeah. and that's why uh, there must be a lot of expertise behind. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you see, it's, uh, the material can be bent, can be, mm, have distortions yeah. and everything. Yeah. You can have uh, bubbles, you can have yeah. uh, intrusions. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's make this is why it's called clean room also. Yeah, yeah. So it needs to be 100% controlled yeah. the process. Okay. Temperature, yeah. humidity yeah. and each single uh, layer going into the into the part. Mm -hmm. For each part we are using many materials yeah. because each layer has the different effect on the final uh, product itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's not just about the single part cut no. but it's also the layer how you put it the direction yeah. and how you divide it parts yeah. to avoid structural leaks or okay. weak points yeah. yeah and how is it in this room do you work on several cars at the same time or is it one car that you uh, built at one time we are doing it in a progress production so yeah. we're doing once we launch a car yeah. we start building all the parts of the car okay so that's an important part of the yeah. process and it's completely traceable so yeah so what what are we seeing here Francesco so this is the roadmap of yeah. each single part mm -hmm. so each part has a specific barcode and part number mm -hmm. and each phase 
of each part has a specific barcode as well. Okay. So we keep uh, records of each step uh, yeah. as an aerospace pro pro okay. process. So that's yeah. the, the point to keep 100% uh, yeah. traceability yeah. because we want to make sure that the parts going into the car are perfect in yeah. all the senses. But does it happen often that you make a mistake in the carbon fiber and need and need to uh, ditch the, the the thing? Yeah, it, it, it can happen. Yeah. I mean, uh, being uh, completely um, work done by hand, so yeah. we're talking about um, artisan work. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, when there is material defect yeah. or something, yeah. we need to look at it, analyze, yeah. Uh, yeah. and uh, sometimes we have to scrap it, scrap the, yeah. scrap the parts. Can you use any of the old carbon fiber parts for anything, or d uh, no, is we, it a reusable? We d um, uh, we send it uh, to reuse the carbon yeah. fiber, but unfortunately, yeah. no. the part itself uh, it cannot be reused no. on the car. And this is, is this a roof part or? It's a hard top. Yes. Oh, it's a hard top. Yeah. Yes, Very it goes into the roadster. Yeah. <coughs> so that's a, a, a second uh, phase of the process to yeah. to build it. Yeah. So that's why it's partially cured. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, the molds are yeah. in carbon fiber as well. Also, yeah. Yeah. Also can you molds. can you reuse the molds forever or no? Do no. No. There okay. is a specific lifetime. Yeah. So. We're doing uh, carbon fiber molds to preserve the quality, yeah. thermal expansion, to yeah. have everything fitting perfectly. Yeah. Uh, but they have a limited lifetime. So okay. normally, after 50 or 100 pieces, uh, yeah. the molds needs to be scrapped. Okay. And so, uh, so you need to build new molds to yes. keep on. Yes, to keep okay. the same level of quality. Yeah. And you need to have specific molds for every specific uh, variant of the Wira? Each part and yeah. each variant. Yeah. And we keep the molds or the master yeah. generating the molds so we can always guarantee to replicate parts in case yeah. of customer needs. Okay, so also if I uh, drive in a 20-year-old Sonda or anything, exactly. you, can, you can make it again. Exactly. Okay, very interesting. So Francesco, can, can you tell us which room are we in now at the factory? This is the autoclave room. Okay, so this is the famous Pagani autoclave. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. And can you, for the viewers, just tell what is an autoclave? Well, it's uh, in a simple uh, in a simple words. Yeah. It's a oven. Yeah. With pressure. Okay. So it controls the temperature. Yeah. The pressure within the barrel. Yeah. And there is also a vacuum part uh, uh, working on the vacuum bag of the part okay. because each part needs to go in the autoclave in a vacuum bag yeah. to extract the air which could lead to a defect on the surface. So, so when the, the part is, uh, when the carbon fiber is put on the mold, then you put it in a bag yes. and suck the air out and yes. you put the part inside the bag, inside the autoclave. Inside plate. the autoclave, yes. Okay. Okay. And we can actually see yeah. <laughs> some parts. Are, are that parts coming out? They are, they are coming out. And how long time does the parts need to be inside the autoclave? To it be varies good? from uh, uh, the part, the resin, so the, the pre prep yeah. and uh, all the things uh, that uh, are in the, uh, specific in the process. Yeah. Uh, when we're doing standard parts, uh, uh, we have uh, a couple of hours cycle. Yeah. Uh, once we have to uh, do molds or things like uh, um, in a, with different materials we yeah. might have to cure it for uh, 48 hours okay okay yes up to 48 hours so that's quite a long time yeah. yes so these are some smaller parts these are smaller parts you yeah. can see that's the the vacuum bag yeah so uh, this is to suck the air out yeah, of the th that's the vacuum valve yeah and they are all connected to the autoclave ah. And the control system of the yeah. autoclave uh, keeps and monitor and keeps all the record yeah. of each single part, each single valve, and each single point of the curing process. Yeah. <coughs> so that's the traceability we want. Uh, so the, the vacuum preserves the parts from, uh, from damaging and absorbs the, the air. And, and obviously, the pressure and the heat uh, kicks the process of, of curing itself, yeah. so yeah. the resin starts to uh, change the molecular structure and the part becomes stiff. How hot is the oven when it's working? 
Still, the temperature depends on the resin okay. and, the, and the properties, but uh, normally it can be up to 140 yeah. degrees, but we can uh, we have also have processes going up to 180 degrees. Okay. It depends. So different temperatures for different parts of the car. Exactly. Yeah. But Francesco, this oven is a little bit smaller, a lot smaller. A lot smaller and... Uh, can you tell me the story of that's, this oven? Uh, that's, uh, a really important part of the factory because it was the very first autoclave that Mr. Pagani bought uh, uh, late in the 80s, yeah. just before uh, leaving Lamborghini. So this is the famous autoclave that, yes. that started the whole company actually. It started the old company and yeah. uh, <coughs> it, uh, it is a part of our history and yeah. uh, we wanted to, you know, rebuild it and have it exactly with the same colors as yeah. the one. This is a Pagani color. Yeah. That's the Aymara, that's a specific Pagani color. Yeah. Um, we still use it. Okay, you still use it for yeah, part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at that time, when Mr. Pagani started the company and bought an autoclave, it wasn't normal to to have this uh, exactly. piece of kit. How is it today? Do all the manufacturers have an autoclave today to make carbon fiber? Or well, back at the time, he was uh, one of the first. Uh, having an autoclave in Italy mm -hmm. and uh, Lamborghini didn't want an autoclave no. this is why he went to a bank asking for a mortgage yeah. to buy his own autoclave yeah. uh, and uh, then uh, eventually he used the autoclave to produce parts for Lamborghini mm -hmm. uh, nowadays there are several composite uh, industries in Italy and worldwide uh, very well qualified mm -hmm. so uh, it's a, a process which now can bring into yeah. the industry and in, into the product carbon fiber or other composite materials to you know aerospace application uh, medical application uh, or sometimes also other automotive uh, industries application like maybe not hypercars but you know some yeah. smaller parts on yeah. uh, on uh, uh, i would say uh, mass production cars yeah. so it started to spread out that's yeah. uh, that's a, a beautiful thing which uh, Mr. Pagani feels also very close to his uh, personal history because yeah. he invested his whole life into this and yeah. uh, he saw the results also on going his yeah. knowledge and technology yeah. spread uh, onto yeah. other fields. And how, how uh, do these autoclaves run all the time or is it only in the daytime or? No, they can run all the time. They run also at night and during okay. the weekends. Yes, they are programmed to work automatically once yeah. the software is uh, fully set yeah. up. And do you only make parts for your own production here or do you also supply others with carbon fiber? No, no we do all yeah. for, only for, for your own. For Pagani, okay. For us. okay, very nice, very nice. <laughs> Se med i næste afsnit af Formula TV, hvor vi fortsætter rundturen på Paganis fabrik. Her skal vi blandt andet se det færdige grosseri i kulfiber, og ikke mindst, hvordan AMG-motoren får lov til at møde chassiet. Så husk at få trykket abonner og slå klokken til. På den måde får du en besked, så snart det næste afsnit er klar. Vi ses.